Hi, I'm Jamie Curtis with Everthrive Financial Group, and I want to take a minute to thank you today for joining me to look at something that's obviously near and dear to my heart. What are you paying me for? So why do you ask an advisor to come into your business, work with you and your committee members to manage your 401k plan? Something interesting happened this summer where we had some litigation that's helping us shape regulation and best practices. So B. Braun Medical successfully defended themselves against a class action lawsuit that was um, geared at, at how they were managing their 401k plan and selecting investments. And it gave a lot of clarity from the judge's words about how to best manage your plan. So today we're going to look at those themes and, and the number one theme that came out was that you need as a committee to meet regularly. So the judge's words were the committee's monitoring and selection process was reasonably prudent because the committee met regularly. So while there was no clear definition of regularly, we think you can, you're safe to assume that at least semi-annual meetings would suffice for regular meetings. Now, our practice with our clients, we send out quarterly investment reviews because we want to make sure that everybody is up to speed with what's happening in the markets, if there's been any impact to the investments that are offered to your participants, and really just to give you that, that insight into how the plan is performing. We also like to meet in person at least semi-annually, sometimes annually if, if that's where our clients' uh, needs are today. But again, we want to make sure that the committee has regular, meaningful information. So, so that was very clear in the judge's words. The second theme was is that you need to utilize some kind of fund reporting. So here again, the watch list to ensure that the plan's investment options were not underperforming. And when they were, the committee voted to remove funds that were. So the judge gave definite notice and recognition to the fact that this committee had processes in place to monitor their funds and made necessary changes when funds became inappropriate. What we like to adhere to and what's the best practice is that your committee should be able to meet the prudent expert or prudent man rule, which means that the reports that you are given should be able to be reasonably understood by a reasonable person. We understand that, that you watching this video are, are maybe a business owner, an HR professional, you are doing wonderful things for the job that you're asked to do. That may or may not have anything to do with investments and probably literally nothing to do with 401ks, but you should be able to take the reports that the advisor is providing to you and reasonably understand them to make decisions. So here our team uses a zero through 10 scoring system, nines and tens being you know, really at the top of the pile, zeros through four being poor. And we have an investment statement policy that helps us in the committee use that scoring system to make decisions and we document every decision that the committee makes. We'll talk more about documentation, but that is a definite theme, that not only should your reports be reliable, but you should definitely be able to document what they said each quarter. Third was that this committee did perform provider benchmarks. Here the judge's words said the committee's process of monitoring recording, excuse me, monitoring record keeping fees and selecting a new record keeper was reasonably prudent. So again, here's that word reasonably prudent. What does that mean? ERISA also gives some guidance and, you know, ERISA is a dictating kind of um, edict over all 401k plans that states that 404a states that a plan a fiduciaries must determine and document the reasonableness of fees. Notice here, nowhere does it say you have to have the lowest cost fees, but again, you have to be able to document what services you're receiving for the fees that you're paying. Our best practice and, and what case law has kind of shown is that you should take your plan out for a live bid. So again, not just using benchmarks, but really asking providers to bid on your plan at least every three to five years, or if you have a meaningful shift in your business that would warrant a change. So three to five years um, is a normal process, but if you had a merger and acquisition, you spun off part of your business, um, you had a, a really rapid hiring expansion, all of those things could cause you to maybe um, do a provider benchmark to see if your current provider is still appropriate. Or what's happened here more recently, if your provider is acquired or merged with another record keeping provider, that could also be a reason to do a, a live bid. In our practice, we definitely adhere to that three to five year rule. Uh, we run the record keeper request for proposal for you. It takes us about 40 to 60 hours. We document every step. We're thoughtful about asking bidding providers 
to respond um, only if they meet the needs of your plan. And then we sort through those responses. We advocate for you. Um, we maybe ask for some fee reductions, which is one of my favorite parts of my job. And then we present that to you, again, in a way that your committee members can easily understand why you made the decision to either keep your current provider or make a change. Fourth, again, procedural prudence. You've heard this word in the, the first three points, but here the judge said, the committee's monitoring selection process was reasonably prudent. Selecting a new record keeper was reasonably prudent. So how do you as a committee prove that you were prudent? Here's where we believe documentation is key. Again, nowhere in ERISA, nowhere in case law does it say, say that everybody has to come to the same decision for the same provider and the same investments but you do have to document why you made the choices for your plan and why they were appropriate for your plan. Some of the ways you can do this is by having a written policy statement. As I mentioned, we utilize an investment policy statement. We document committee members. We document um, additions, removals of committee members. We really memorialize everything around who's making the decisions and how they're being made. And then you take that a step further by documenting those decisions. Ideally, somebody who's in your seat 5, 10, 20 years from now should be able to pick up your reports and say, oh, we completely can see why provider A was chosen over provider B or why investment X was used over investment Y. Here again is where our team comes into play. We help the committee take meeting notes. We document your notes. We help you with your committee documents and really make sure that if it ever came down to why a decision was made, you could readily defend and substantiate that decision-making process. And then finally, the judge did say committees need to rely on advice. Moreover, the committee relied on advisors. As I mentioned, for all of you watching this video, you're probably doing a lot of other things that have nothing to do with investing or 401ks. Partnering with a trusted advisor is key. So if you're currently working with an advisor or if you're searching for an advisor, some questions you might want to ask are, are you a fiduciary? Do you serve as a 321 or a 338 fiduciary? The difference here is a 321, uh, the advisor makes recommendations to the committee. Ultimately, the committee has to vote to approve those. On the other hand, a 338 advisor has discretion. So when we serve as a 338, we still give the committee all of the, the whys behind we're make, why we're making changes, but we can in, you know, take those changes and enact them without a vote. Whereas when we serve as a 321, we still need the committee to vote. Neither of those um, approaches are right or wrong. It's just, again, what best fits the need of you and your plan participants. Do you meet regularly? So I'd even go so far as to say, is your advisor readily available? So as I mentioned, we send out quarterly reports, but we're available pretty much on demand for the plans we manage. We understand that when an issue arises, you need quick answers. You need quick, accurate responses. So we like to make ourselves available. Um, we really like to partner with our clients as your 401k advisor, your 401k department. And so that, um, that means giving advice on not only investments, but about plan design, where, where the industry is heading, if there's new legislation or regulations, we want to make sure that you and your committee members fully understand that and feel confident about the plan you're offering to your team members. And then what type of reports are you provi getting provided? Is the advisor, again, are they timely? Are they meaningful? Are they easy to understand? Um, are they reliable? All of those things are essential to a successful relationship with your advisor. Um, and again, making sure that your plan is running as effectively and efficiently as possible. So as you can tell, we love 401k plans. I um, always feel like I have an honor to help run them and, and have um, successful outcome retirements, or excuse me, retirement outcomes for the participants who utilize them. We would love for you to engage with us on social media through subscribing to our YouTube page. You also are welcome to contact us the good old fashioned ways on the telephone or the email. But I would encourage you, if you are looking for an advisor, or if you just want to ask some questions about what a dedicated team of 401k advisors could do for you, reach out. I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for spending time with me today.